Let's appreciate you for president. Your Excellency, it be represented by well, my colleague, Professor, I wouldn't know, sir, whether you join the strike, we will we'll strike. <laughs> Could you get me? His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, a full professor, my past presidents here present. Without them, I wouldn't have been here. In fact, why do we call them past presidents? I call them living ancestors. My living ancestors, thank you for the future of them. My sister, president of NAPSA, because of the unique work you are doing with us in Nigeria. Incidentally, she's an adjunct professor with the University of Benin in the Department of Clinical Pharmacy. Maybe I will transfer my services from farm camp to clinical pharmacy. Well, incidentally, I have supervised a PhD student in clinical pharmacy who is a full fledged professor, so I think I have the right if I decide to do my sabbatical there. Your Royal Highness, it's Honorable Commissioners, uh, let me stand on existing protocol because Your Excellency has a tight schedule even. Uh, uh, my CMD, who is representing the minister, and I have broken protocol, but I want to redeem time because I know you have somewhere to go. One of the, one of the most topical issues in health space in contemporary times remains the eventual asset of the pharmacy bill, which has been in works for over five years. It is important that I set the record straight as far as the evolution of this Lifeline Act of Parliament in Nigeria. In 2014, the PSM mobilized its presidency, which was a driving force behind the Law and Ethics Committee to lead a mighty proponents of motions and resolution at AGM and proceedings of summits held in 2002 and 2012. Some of the salient inputs from PSM into this act include one, introduction of satellite pharmacy concept to redress several years of glamour of the hospital, administrative, industrial, and academic pharmacies who wanted an extension of a window of practice at community level in larger bid to promote access to pharma care coordinated directly by pharmacists. Two, the registration of hospital pharmacies in public and private sectors, as approved by AGM in the Lowry in 1996. Broader representation in the composition of the Governing Council of PCA to endanger the all stakeholders buy in as well as promote collaboration in regulatory activities between PCA and NAFTA. Also, the clear and unambiguous functions and powers of PCA to inspect, approve, license, regulate all pharmaceutical premises, including BPMD dealers, satellite pharmacies, and all and pharma, pharma marketers who are non-pharmacists. In addition, we have a designation of the registrar as the chief executive and chief accounting officer of PCA. We also wanted to define within the realms of the law the ownership of the tip premises in Nigeria. Spelling out of the full latitude of powers of pharma inspectors in Nigeria is also an added value. Strengthening the disciplinary process and procedures of disciplinary tribunal of PCA after the last comprehensive activity of the tribunal in 2015 under the chairmanship of pharmacist Bruno Wang for FPSN, who was dominated by PSN. The PSN in that era worked with the immediate past registrar who developed the grounds for professional misconduct and infamous conduct which today are entrenched in section 47 of the PCN Act of 2022. Finally, the PSN worked assiduously with PCM registry in the absence of the Governing Council 
which was dissolved in June 2015, to continue advocacy during the crucial period between July 2015 and 2018 in the face of setback of the National Assembly and Presidency. Before I continue, we have some pharmacists who are on the eighth floor, and I want to specially recognize them. Please, if you know you are a pharmacist and you are 18 years and above, I want you to stand because we want to recognize you specially.
We hit the ground running with a presidential retreat in December 2021 to set a clear court agenda for a rewarding future for practitioners and consumers of health in, in Nigeria. We've been working with the community pharmacy ACPN, and I really want to appreciate uh, the chairman Wally for his doggedness. I will, and gratefully, some of our age group barriers have been broken. Today, Nigeria is one of the 45 countries in the world where COVID-19 vaccination is conducted in community pharmacies. The National Primary Health Care Development Agency has been very supportive of our yearnings and will convey our kudos to this great agency. We shall continue to support all efforts to train and retrain community pharmacies in vaccination-inclined endeavors so that community pharmacies can legitimately run routine immunization procedures in Nigeria. And I also want to thank our NAPSA colleagues. Uh, yesterday they ran a training program and we work closely with them so that every national, every national conference, the vaccination program will be robust and will continue to grow higher. The ultimate is to entrench community pharmacies as primary health care facilities in tandem with National Health 2014 Act. And I assure you, we will get there. Hospital and administrative pharmacy, we must continue to appreciate recent gains that we have that manifested in the approval of the FAMD degree, consultancy cadre in hospital pharmacy practice, as well as the recent payment of areas uh, of hazard allowances in hospital pharmacy. Before I go to the next paragraph, I want to thank Your Excellency. In my state, Edo State, the consultancy cadre have been implemented to the fullest in all categories, both local government and state uh, hospitals. I know I made a great yesterday when I visited, but I'm reiterating it in the presence of all pharmacies, and I trust Your Excellency. I love Your Excellency, and I'm sure by the time I get back to Lagos, I will hear good news that the consultancy cadre has been implemented in Plateau State. I must continue to thank our strategic alliance partner, the Jewesu and Ahabon, who gave support to the quest to realize this listed objective. Our current efforts are focused on the issuance of a new scheme of service of pharmacies, which recognizes all recent approvals by the Office of the Head of Service of Federation, Federal Ministry of Health, Sal and Salaries and Wages Commission. The adjustments in co-health is taking a new shape, which we are monitoring through our ongoing negotiations by Jewesu and Ahabon. I must accomplish a happen again to comply with the vast council and resolutions of AGM of 2020 that it returns to the appropriate union to energize what neighbor groups are doing, particularly now that I have AGM made bold moves to actualize this in August 2022. The Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria is currently working with the National Assembly to strengthen the DIY concept and we shall update members as necessary on this particular development. Some of the moves we make, we don't make them public, but when they are achieved, we make them public, or they make themselves public. I would like, at this juncture, to let you know that I don't run PSL alone. I have a national executive committee. I will ask all members of NEC to please rise up, so that people will know who have been working closely with the president. <laughs> Dr. Uju, internal auditor, please all NEC members rise up. My group is there guiding me. The two deputy national and every member, we really appreciate you. I want to say they have worked tirelessly. And at times, even when I'm not physically there, they take up responsibilities to make sure that PSA always goes forward. Thank you very much, Mr. President. <laughs> Recent declarations by some concerned stakeholders in healthcare compel us to develop a holistic academic pharmacy resource template in Nigeria. Of course, you know I'm from the academia. In this regard, PSN is leading initiative to establish the National Postgraduate College of Pharmacy. A draft bill is before the National Assembly in its preparative stages. Our goal is to restructure the totality of the relationship management architecture between the postgraduate college and universities through appropriate regulatory reforms and platforms and in the education sector for new benefit packages to accrue to all concerned in the training and process of pharmacies both at the undergraduate and postgraduate level. For industrial pharmacies, I dwelt on this earlier 
by clamoring for new investments in our industries, at this made possible that the GDP of the nation through local manufacturing drops uh, from the exposition uh, that EBSO and others are making, that will mean that the future is bright. We shall continue to encourage new collaborations with NIPRID. And I want to challenge all deans of pharmacy in various schools that if you don't have the address of the DG of NIPRID, please get the, get the address, the phone number, the email. You have something good if you collaborate with DG of NIPRID. We also have to look at the research and production unit, centers for drug discovery, as well as related structures in the university and the general of the local pharma industry to ensure that research endeavors begin to receive fresh momentum and become new products in our climate. This conference taught medicine security in an unstable economy. And the keynote address speaker is Dr. Obi Peter Adingwe, a seasoned speaker, gifted with origin prowess, will be doing justice to this very important topic. I strongly believe that every participant in this August gathering will live here fulfilled and be ready to work for the growth of pharmacy. A special guest of honor will be speaking on the subject stemming the misuse and abuse of essential medicine in the depressed economy. This is relevant that there are bodies of evidence on the correlation between national security and substance misuse and abuse. I want to bring to your notice what I think is we should take note of as pharmacists. At this moment, it's worrisome, particularly from the statistics we have on the immigration of pharmacies from Nigeria. Over 5,000 pharmacies have left the country in the last five years in search of the provider green and pastures, just like their counterparts in other health fields, and indeed many young Nigerians. Sir, our Honorable Minister of Health, we want him to look over this because if we continue to lose members of the health sector at an alarming rate, not only pharmacists, but you know, physicians, nurses, and what have you, then the country will be in serious trouble in the next few years. We must make the environment conducive for people to practice their profession, who are professionals, in the right place. Special thanks to His Excellency Sir Simon Lalong, the Executive Governor of Plateau State, who welcomed us in his open arm. I was with him in the golf course yesterday. Um, you know, professors won't tell you where they have opportunity to do receive, but I'll tell you, I've never played golf, and His Excellency asked me. I heard, I was quite happy to participate. But I must confess, the first time I hit the air and I was asked to do a receipt, and I got it right. My appreciation will also go to the Chairman of the Occasion, His Excellency General Yakub Bomo, who, who couldn't be here or apparently absent. Uh, very important, he has to sit back where he is to attend to some needs. I will close by saying that don't go away. We will have social nights, long sessions, banquets, that will showcase the traditional hospitality of the nice people of Plateau. Families must learn new things about jobs. It's a special gift to, to Nigeria in many regards, from the unique weather to its peculiar two to three planting seasons in one calendar year. Finally, I want to thank members of PSN for this support over the past one year, our future remains bright, despite some challenges which we, we always, which will always be there. As of March through next year, we shall double our efforts to bring new deliverables on the table before the 96th annual National Scientific Conference. Thank you and God bless you. A round of applause.
applause for our president. Thank you very much. Here that we have uh, men of honor from different aspects of life. And even before me, we have an upper who is a pharmacist as well. So it's not just people who from Vegas in academia and what they are doing. We all come here together. We want to partner with the federal government. We want to stem the tide of pharmacists living in the country. We want better services, better facilities, such that pharmacists will be able to practice and provide essential pharmaceutical care to Nigeria. When that is done and the opportunities are there, people will leave this country. People will always do the best and give the best. Don't forget, pharmacists are the most trusted professionals in the world. Right behind you is the incoming president of NAFTA. He came from the U.S. He lives in Ohio. And many others, Dr. Emao Meher, Dr. Teresa Pound, even Dr. Anthony Kemet. So people came from various parts of the world to face this occasion. They will tell you that Nigeria is becoming safer and better. And we'll let you know that pharmacists are people who are always prepared to do what is needed to make the country safe.